Daki means to grab and hug and pick up something. Wakari means to separate your legs, to separate. Wakari means to separate. And you'll see when we do it, you're going to separate, kind of split your legs apart, and the basic variation of doing it. We'll do some other variations of it. But so the first thing we're going to do is Daki Wakari. Pick up, grab, and hug, and separate. And you'll see what we mean in a moment here. Swings that right leg through and dips it. Wham! There you go. All the way over. Okay, take a near, grab here. Now, think about things. We're going to grab the near shoulder, it's going to be a high grip, higher grip. Okay? So we control this area of his body. Now, with his left hand, if you wrestle that here or whatever, you can get a you know, spiral right or whatever. But we're going to grab about the, the gi, the belt, something here on the far hip. So we've got a near control high. We've got a far control at the hip low. Now what Derek's going to do, let me see. so he's going to swing this leg through this hole. And as he does, he's going to whip James over his body. Wham, just like that. Okay? So the first thing, near, near control here on the shoulder, right? Grab that collar. It really is helpful. It's a great handle. Old coach of mine, Rene Pomerel, said everything's a handle. It's true. All right. Now, the near side, he's, he might start with the ride, but grab him nice and tight in the hip here. So we've got near high control, far low control. Shoulder control, hip control. Now he's going to have to pop up a little. Now, when he does that, he swings that right leg through and dips him. Wham! There you go. All the way over. So we see here there? Now watch him when he swings. He's going to swing his leg through. There. That's what I'm looking for. See that? You want to really roll him over you. So let's look at that leg action now. You got the hand action. Let's look at the leg action. See? Okay. Got the hands here. Now, he's going to, he has to pop up a little bit to give himself room to move. Now look at his, in this case, right leg. He's going to swing his right leg right through that hole and drive it through and keep it straight. And as he does that, he's going to pull him and whip him. Okay, and then hug him to himself. Bam. There you go. Now, when you're doing this, and we'll show you here how he gets here. Okay, we're going to show this in a moment. All right? So here he is. We lock, we lock, and we swing through and hug him. Daki is the hugging part. Okay? So I'm going to hug him, and I'm going to swing through. So do that. Okay. And so he gets low. Gets a, See, he's got this really nice grip here, and when he swings his leg through, wham, that swing through, that's the separation of the legs, okay? Now, you know, if you've got a brain in your head, you're not going to come out and get in this position. So we've got to make sure he gets here. So stand up for me, would you? Now, we might be good in time with grip. You know, Derek might have done a foot sweep and knocked him down. A foot sweep, boom, pull him there, and guess what? Now he can come around, and he can shoot the Dr. Macari. Listen, any time you're grappling, just by theory, just by belief, I don't want to be up on my hands and knees. I mean, not my hands. I got a lot of holes here if I'm Derek. Okay? I don't want this to happen. He's giving me too many opportunities to throw him, arm lock him, choke him, get a leg, to, you know, trap it. So, if all he's doing now is holding himself up by his hands. If he's down on elbows and knees, he can defend, he can, and he can use his elbows to pop out, sit out, pop away from him, get away, okay? So don't just be there. So a lot of guys end up there. We, we you know, well wrestled in college, wrestled in high school or college, that's parterre. And, you know, international wrestling, there you go, okay? A lot of guys assume that immediately, no matter what the graphics for. So there are a lot of gaps there that I want to do. So what we're going to do, we're going to start with this. And know that you can pop him there, do a hip cut, whatever. He's down somewhere. He, whenever he's here, this is a good move to do, a good viable move to do. Okay? So, aim your head towards him. Right, so, we, it, say if I were wrestling and grappling, I can start down. I mean, I do this from a standing position, but I can start down here and still do it. Just as long as I catch, you know, the, the correct side. Catch the near side and control. And these are just good control points in grappling. Okay, so if I control the near shoulder, by his real handy collar here, it's a great handle, here, and I'm riding here, and I just go ahead and grab it pretty tight up in here at his belt. You know, grab his pants here. And, you know, like, heist him on a, on a hip. And now I can pop up here, and I can swing through and whip him. 
So again, the basic way you just did, okay? I could demo. There we are. Nice high and low on the grip. He pops up. He swings his right leg through. That's our standard version of Docky Lucari, how we do it. Okay, now, you're going to change a little bit. I'm tall. Some of you guys are he's tall, okay? And if you can't get your whole leg through, I found years ago, I can drive just my knee, swing my knee through, and get the same effect. Same, same, same effect. And it works pretty good. So let's look at that. Okay, so he does the same thing. Go ahead and get your high low. Gets a good grip. Gets a good grip there. Okay? He still pops up just like he did. But instead of swinging the foot straight through, he's going to bend his knee, and he's going to drive the knee through the exact same throw, except he's bending his knee and driving his knee through, not his foot. And that's it. That may work better for him. Sometimes I have found in my own personal experience to turn a guy like he's had a strong wrestling background and I just wanted to turn him to get a, a good Osei Komi good pin in from a, from a ride, I can even do it from there. And I'm going to show you a way a good friend of mine, a very ensemble man, showed me a variation in a moment after he did this. So let's look at the basic, again, this variation of it here. Same as we did before, but instead of, you go ahead and pop it, go ahead and pop it. Instead of swinging the whole foot through, you drive your knee through. Bang. And the momentum of it, do it like full speed. The momentum is necessary. It's a momentum throw. Bam, and you're on top of it. Okay? The key thing here, this is one of those <coughs> transition moves that we use in whatever grappling sport. We want to take him from a stable to an unstable base. In this case, he's a pretty stable base. If he's done a lot of collegiate wrestling or something, he's pretty strong in parterre. Okay? Or even down on elbows and knees. And that's strong. But we want to take him from that stable base to put him, make him unstable. That's what a throw is, really, isn't it? When you think about it, when you're throwing somebody, he's a stable structured base, you break his balance somehow, you <coughs> unstable. Well, that's what we're doing here. Okay? One more time with the knee. Just watch the knee. So he pops up, same as you did before, pop up. Now watch that knee bend, swing right through. It's the same thing. You got the basic variation of it, the basic application. This is going to be easy. So we, we had a question about getting your hands stuck as you're rolling through. And it, it's a common thing. One thing that you have to start to remember is as long as your hand isn't back here and he's laying on it, it isn't technically stuck. Okay, that's just another corner that you're controlling at that point. Which is one of the reasons why we come through and we grab around the front side and not, you know, like back here. Because if I catch back here, I can still roam through. I can pull him pretty tight. I can even grab his pants and do the same thing. But when he rolls over, he's going to land on that hand. He's going to sit on it. And then it really is dead. Around front, my hand can still move around, and you've got the flat part of your forearm underneath him. It really doesn't matter. When you step over into a different pin than Moody Katami, say you step over into mount, you're literally hugging the guy all the way around. And even if you have shorter hands, it really doesn't, or shorter arms, it really doesn't matter. So I come through here and I get a good grip right there, pop out, slide in, bridge over. And this is where everybody was worried. They were like, oh, my hand's stuck. Well, your, your forearm is stuck, but you can see my hand wiggling around right here, right? It's good. Now, the only thing that I'm going to get in trouble for is if I literally try and back out like this, and then it's an issue. But I really don't need to do that, okay? I've got this pen. I can crank them over that way and get a, uh, a Mooney Gatami or side control. Okay? More often than not, though, we just step right over and see how you can literally pin him over, and that arm now becomes another lever to completely encircle the guy's hips, and then this top corner is pinned down. He's not going anywhere. Okay? I put my hooks in, get this hand free right there for the choke, and then it's a simple pop out. Okay? Real easy choke thing. So, it shouldn't be that big of an issue as long as you're moving in the current direct or the correct direction for the pin. Okay, and we're always trying to compress those pins, right? You're not trying to run back this way and, and drag them and create that space. You're trying to step over and intertwine more. Okay, you, you, you destabilize them. You keep your position and keep building on that position, improving that position. Don't pull out again and have to reposition. Does that make sense right. to everybody? Okay. Now, we're gonna, I'm going to have you drill on this, what, exactly what he did here, because that's a great question, Patty. But Will, I want to see, where are the guys? We're going to show off this. Oh, okay. Come on, you guys step back. Oh, you guys? They're gonna show watch this. Oh, these clouds? Yeah. You oh, okay. God. You guys, you should take a turn. Now, watch this. This is a great, do, do, 
the one we just did, the Nian Yoko Wakari. All right, the Daki Wakari. Yeah, that's really cool. All right, now you gotta get back at it. You gotta show just as good. Just as good. If we saw that in a freestyle judo match, uh, that would definitely be worth even a breakdown point to be worth one. But if he got enough back exposure, what do you think, Coach? Probably might be a two point. Maybe, maybe a two pointer. So there's points right there, and it puts you in a controlling position to the side, just like Derek showed, to take him and control him further. Show that one more time. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks. We'll show that one, then we're going to have you work on this. And then we're going to come back with a little leg foot variation to it. So let's, now let's talk about finishing. Okay. So now you say, well, how's this functional? How does this work for me? Well, now we're going to work it. Whatever reason he's down, you might have hip cut, pop him down, pop him up. And, and again, I cannot stress this enough, guys. If you wrestle in high school or college, it's a wonderful sport. I wrestled myself. I loved it. But this high parterre here is not your friend in grappling. Because we have a jacket. We have too many things. We do, we do submissions. We do crazy stuff like this. You may, not, you may see it in wrestling, but... Certainly because we have so many handles, we can do this in what we do. So don't give him an opportunity. If I come here and park here, maybe I did that you know, collegiately, that's great. But when we're grappling, I'm going to be here so I can start moving my elbows and defending my neck and arms. Don't ever straighten out an arm and give a guy caps. These, these nice holes, these gaps. Wow. I mean, thank you. You know, and, 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 and whack him. You know, and let him pay for his mistake. So why don't you coach that again, and then we'll let you do this, what he's going to show. Finish off with a uh, pop over. Okay, so again, we're going to come in in the same exact position, just make sure you're, you're around the front quarter, okay? We're not trying to be on the back part of his, his hip or his, his thigh, we're not trying to be on the side because then it is going to be an issue. So around the front, stay nice and tight, if you can get your shoulders across the back of his shoulders all the better because you're going to get more width, okay? And you pop out, you can that knee through, we roll over a bridge, as he's there you keep a hold of it, okay? Pin down that way, step right over and bring your, your hooks in, okay? Now I have a, a super, super tight pin, he ain't going anywhere, okay? Keep the hand there until you can collect and just windshield wiper your hand through, okay? So we're already here in pinning, the hand comes up, okay? Windshield wiper between his head and the mat. Sometimes you kind of whack him a little bit, but it's not, it's not that bad, all right? It's his head, not yours. Right. <laughs> okay. One thing I don't want to do is start doing this and trying to lift up, because he's going to grab that hand. Okay, and now we're in a hand battle. So just come out, windshield wiper your way in, keep your head on the mat. As long as my head is down here, I'm pinning his shoulder against the carotid, and that's what I want for the choke. I don't want to be up here. There we see that, that's a key point. Post on your head. You'll see that more later this afternoon we do arm locks, but posting on the head to turn again. So keep that in mind. Okay. So as soon as that's there, let go, slide that in, head back down, squeeze, or you can switch back through to the figure four. Okay, finish off. In any event, he's winning, isn't he? Because he's down on top. <coughs> he's got to move on. You know, I first showed you this. Well, how's it going to help me? I whip on his back, big deal, I lose him. Oh, I want to keep control of him. Remember, <coughs> Everything we do, no matter what the grappling sport it is, no matter what the fighting sport is, I want to continually and always improve my position and make life suck for him. Okay? That's, that's my goal when I'm on the mat. And so now, you see how we, well, what's the function of whipping him and then letting go of him? Well, there was no function. Maybe I get points of it in a judo match or sambo match. But how's that relevant? How do I hold him from there? How do I control it? Now we're starting to see, and each of you in your own way, you're starting to see how you whip them over, control them, gain more control, so you stick them with a hold down, maybe they should choke, maybe choke, arm lock or something. One more time. So just watch, and this is why we're doing it now. We pop up, we do the move, and finish it out. There he goes, and he just continually gains more control, more control, until he gets either a hold for time, get judo or sambo, uh, or uh, judo anyway, or, um, you know, I can finish him with a submission. So that's the reason we're doing this. We want to finish him. You know, that's why do you start something? You got to finish, don't you? You want to finish it. Well, that's the finish. So every move, and you know, a lot of people thought, well, I, I, I had a turn. We were turning one time. And he spun under a guy. Good, nice. Come on, I get a juji, and he, he gave me a guy tap out. You know, it was a judo tournament. 
And the referee said to me, he said, well, he couldn't throw him. He didn't want to throw him. He wanted to finish him. He wanted to beat him. He, he throw him fine. He wanted to make him lose. In this case, he did a transition to the ground to get a nice jujigatami. He, he had that money. He didn't need to throw him. So the throw here, in this case, is a transition from a stable to an unstable position for your opponent. And I continue more control. Does that make sense to everybody? That's why we do this stuff, isn't it? Real yes, sir. No matter what the discipline we do, that's why. Now, let's add a little variation. A very good friend of mine, Jim Schneeweiss, one of the best coaches I ever worked with in any sport, and he was a national champion in Sambo, too. Um, kind of turn around board this way. There you go. Now, I'm going to I'm gonna show here. Can everybody come around here? you got to look at the feet, really. The upper body stuff's the same. We're going to look at my left foot on James's right foot, okay? Now, if the guy's flat on his feet like this, it's not going to work. But if he's popped up high like this, and he's starting to try to base out, get a base to pop out, that's where you're going to catch him. And I know in Sambo, a lot of guys, if they're down, I mean, I, I don't want to be here, okay? I want to be out, and I want to at least be neutral in a game position. If I'm down here, I'm in trouble. That's the way I look at it. But look at that gap there. There's that, look at that gap there. So I'm going to take advantage of those gaps. Okay? Now, my, my buddy Jim Schneeweiss taught me this many years ago. I'm going to put my left, if I had my Sambo shoes on, there'd be laces there. He would too. I want to put lace to lace, right? foot to foot. What's your instep? I always forget. It's an instep? Okay. All right. So I'm doing all this stuff here, all this stuff right here. And when I pop up, I'm going to pop that foot right here. See? Or you can even do it kneeling, you know, whatever you prefer. Right? But when you swing through either a straight leg or it probably works better with a knee bend, you can help lift with that foot. Now watch Derek do this. Now watch his left foot action. Just the lace. Now see, see this foot here? That, now that's the trap. And when he swings through, he's going to lift with that foot and lift him over, make him fly even more. It's a better measure of control. Now we're controlling a part of his lower body as well. And, and Jim and I used to like to drill on this a lot. And he was 136 pounds and I weighed 220. So he said, any way I can get your fat butt over, I'm going to do it. You know? And he came up with stuff like that. Very innovative guy. So let's look at that again. So see that foot there? Now you can even be lower, you know, down lower. But when he swings, now watch him lift with that foot. Now, don't make that the main part of the move. It's just an extra. If it helps you, you think, well, this is, try it a few times, and or try it in gyms at home. So, ah, it doesn't work for me. Then don't use it. But it is just an extra that may help you lift and throw him harder onto his back. Remember, even if I break him down, like in a breakdown or turnover, if I can, again, make life suck for him, if I can throw him harder, I'll take a little more starch out of the morning. And does that make him weaker? You bet. I want to keep making him weaker and be stronger. So that's the purpose of this. One more time, then we'll let you guys do it. So pop up, do your thing. Okay, wait. And he swings that through, he lace to lace. And come right over. Make sense? Sure. Sure. We'll do that, we'll finish out it, then we'll go do another thrust. <coughs> 